I'll call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is an open meeting of the Seward, Nebraska governing body. The city of Seward abides by the Nebraska Open Meetings Act in conducting business. A copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is displayed on the north wall of this meeting room facility as required. Disclosure of meeting recording processes is posted in the meeting room. A participant sign sheet is available for <coughs> each by any citizen addressing the council. Presenters shall approach the podium, state their name and address for their clerk's record, and are asked to limit remarks to five minutes. All remarks shall be directed to the mayor, who shall determine by whom any appropriate response shall be made. The City of Surrey reserves the right to adjust the order of items on its agenda if necessary and may elect to take action on any of the items listed. Please call the roll. Kaler. Here. Alterman. Present. Miller. Here. Singleton. Here. Streisand. Here. Worden. Here. Wilkin. Here. We have a quorum present. All right. Thank you. Uh, for the consent agenda this evening, we have six items <laughs> and six Number six includes um, a number of, of appointments and reappointments. Move for Second. We have a motion and a second. Please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Taylor, Coulterman, Miller, Singleton, Strice, and Morgan, 7-0. All right, item number one in our public hearings. Consideration of a special use permit for 116 South Columbia Avenue to allow construction of an accessory building in, in excess of 900 square feet. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor and Council. All right, Mr. Matsky wishes to construct a building 1,450 square feet. If you remember from previous uh, meetings when we've dealt with this, 900 square feet is the allowable for a lot within the city that is under one acre. Um, looking at Tom's lot, uh, all the setbacks can be met with no problem. The 20% rear yard was the big one. However, he had uh, 11,800 square feet available in his rear yard. Requirement of that is only 4,876. If you take into account his 900 square foot above ground pool that's no longer above ground, and his uh, proposed 1,450 square foot building, he's still left with 9,450 square feet in his rear yard. As planning commission looked at it, due to the size of his yard, they didn't feel it looked out of place. Tom also commented that there would not be a metal garage, it would be a material garage that matches the house, whether it's brick or however, but it, it would be complimentary or matching of the house. Based on that, planning commission recommended 6-0. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the council? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a public hearing oh, real quick. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Um, anyone from the, well, I'll open the public comment portion of the public hearing. Anyone from the public wishes to comment on this item, please come forward at this time. Seeing no one, I will go ahead and close the public comment portion of the public hearing. Would anyone like to make a motion? Now I'll make a motion. No, a second. Is right. a motion to approve <coughs> the special use permit. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Kaler, Coulterman, Miller, Singleton, Strice, and Morgan, 7 0. All right, thank you. Item number two in public hearing consideration of an ordinance rezoning property identified as Ringler, first edition from Ag this Agricultural District to Rural Residential District. Welcome back. All right, Mr. Ring Ringler uh, purchased 154 acre approximate tract of land. Um, within that tract was a 7.25 acre parcel that currently has a residence existing on it uh, that's leasing it. Um, he would like to, and the minor plat was approved to uh, remove that 7.25 acre from the 154. Uh, so that he could sell that parcel to the current tenant. Um, all the requirements.
permits for rural residential are met on that track. Uh, it was recommended 6-0 to approve, and as I said, the, the minor plat removing that uh, parcel from the 154 acres was also recommended 6-0. Did you have any concerns at all with that? No, the, the only, they were concerned about uh, uh, effects on neighboring properties. Nothing changes right. other than the, the individual living there and leasing it can now own it. Okay. Good. Are there any questions or comments from the council? It is also a public hearing, so I can open up to public comment. Is there anything from the public that wish to comment on this item? Please come forward at this time. We're not making you, but you're sure welcome to. Come on up. My name is Robert Ringler. I'm the owner of the property. If you have any questions, please ask. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the council or any specifically from Mr. Ringler? Otherwise, I would ask someone to introduce the ordinance. I will introduce the ordinance. All right. In order to amend the official zoning map of the city of Seward, Nebraska, to rezone certain property within the extraterritorial jurisdiction of the city of Seward, Nebraska, now zoned Ag Agricultural District to RR Rural Residential District, specifically tracts of land north of Alvo Road and west of 294th Road, to des describe the property rezoned to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form to provide for a time when this ordinance shall take effect. The ordinance has been read by title and is designated as ordinance number 2023-11 and the title is hereby approved. I need a motion to dispense with statutory rule. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Kaler, Colton, and Miller, Singleton, Strikes, and Morgan, 7 0. Again, this is ordinance number 2023 11. Would anyone like to move that this ordinance be passed and adopted as read? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question is shall ordinance number 2023 11 be finally passed and adopted? Please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Kaler, Coulterman, Miller, Singleton, Strikes, and Morgan, 7-0. All right, thank you. Um, item three, pub, also a public hearing, consideration of an ordinance approving the preliminary and final plat of Hendricks Compound Subdivision. Tim? All right, Alyssa contacted our office originally uh, wanting to do an administrative replat of several properties over on South Columbia. Uh, as staff began to dive into the different properties, uh, we four or five different plats, some of them dating over 100 years old, um, missing information, overlapping subdivision lines and boundaries. Uh, we noted that there was an accessory building on a uh, individual lot, which by ordinance must be on a lot with a principal structure. Um, there was missing access easements. Uh, between her, them and the neighbors. We found those dated in very old deeds. So we felt that the best way to clean up this whole area is just do a major subdivision. Just start from scratch, get the deeds on there, uh, hook up the uh, accessory building with an accessory structure on the same lot so we can bring it into compliance. And uh, the only major concern with this one, we, we did have a pretty good public turnout for this one. The big concern was what is, are the Hendricks doing with this property and this uh, replant? Uh, she answered that nothing. There, there's nothing she can do with it. There, there's no plan of apartments, which was the big concern. Uh, she can't meet the ingress, egress uh, situation for that property. There's some floodplain property back there. Um, that was not her intent. Her intent was just to clean all this up for whatever her future endeavors is. With that, it was recommended 6-0 that we approve the plan. It's probably also an opportunity from the city standpoint to get this cleaned up. As yes, well. correct. Okay. All right, good. Um, are there any questions or comments from the council? There's also a public hearing, so we can open up the public comment portion. Of the public hearing, they would like to speak at this time. Please come forward. Welcome. Alyssa Hendricks, 456 South Columbia. I am the property owner of Hendricks Compound, a lot 
like Tim said, there was it was a mess. <laughs> Bless Sarah for the time that she took to um, dive into all of it and make sure that it was great. Um, there were some even lines that needed to be adjusted through the um, county assessor as well. So, and like he said, that was kind of the neighbors to. I don't know, would that be the north of the outlaw? Yeah, yeah. Was concerned about development in our back 2.83 acres. We don't like neighbors, so we're not building anything back there. So, um, just so it is on public record that we have no plans to build anything on our outlaw. So. Thank you. Do we have a lot of areas like this in Seward that we need to be systematically cleaning up or do we I, wait I, until someone says I don't something? think this bad. I mean, okay. Old Town, uh, on, on the outskirts, and there's been a lot going on down there, so. Okay. Yeah, I think what we've seen so far, this has been the worst. So. Okay. Because I don't know if those were access to what the brickyards were. Is that how we Yeah, there used to be an old brickyards then? down there somewhere, but I think that was farther south. south. So. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the council? Does anyone else from the public wish to speak on this item? No one else, thank you. Any other questions or comments from the council? I'd ask someone to introduce the ordinance. I'll introduce the ordinance. Okay. In ordinance to approve the plat entitled Hendricks Compound Subdivision, a plat of land located on the southwest one fourth of the southeast one fourth of section 21, township 11, north, range 3, east of the 6 p.m. Seward County, Nebraska, as here and after set forth to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form to provide for a time when this ordinance shall take effect. The ordinance has been read by title. It is designated as ordinance number 2023-12. And the title is hereby approved. Maybe a motion to suspend the statutory rule. Second. A motion and a second is doing further discussion. Seeing none, please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Kaler, Coltman, Miller, Singleton, Strice, and Morgan, 7 0. Again, this is ordinance number 2023 12. Would anyone like to move that this ordinance be passed and adopted as read? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, the question is Shall ordinance number 2023 12 be finally passed <coughs> and adopted? Please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Kaler, Coltman, Miller, Singleton, Strice, and Morgan, 7 0. Right, thank you. Um, next public hearing, item number four uh, consideration of an ordinance rezoning property identified as Hendricks Compound Subdivision from R3 Urban Residential Mixed Density District to R4 Urban Residential Multifamily District. All right, to go along with the plat, it was noted that half the plat was under R3 zoning and that the uh, other half was under R4 zoning. Uh, as staff looked at it and looked at the densities, uh, there's more R3 to the north, more R4 to the south and to the west. Uh, going through the, the densities and looking at the properties and knowing that her intent was not to expand, there really was no difference whether we went R3 or R4. It was kind of her preference. Um, and so we just went with the R4, um, and she meets all the qualifications for that. Again, recommended 6-0. Right. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the council? There's also a public hearing that requires a public comment. Anyone from the public wish to comment on this item? Please come forward at this time. Seeing no one wishing to comment, I will close the public comment portion of the public hearing. Make sure to the council for any other questions or comments, or if someone would like to introduce the ordinance. I'll introduce the ordinance. All right. In ordinance to amend the official zoning map of the city of Seward, Nebraska to rezone certain property within the corporate limits of the city of Seward, Nebraska. Now zoned R3 urban residential mixed density district to R4 urban residential multifamily district. Specifically, tracts of land east of Columbia Avenue and south of Bemis Drive to describe the property rezoned to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form to provide for a time when this ordinance shall take effect. The ordinance has been read by title and is designated as ordinance number 2023-13 and the title is hereby approved. I need a motion to dispense with statutory rule. Second. 
So a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Kaler, Coulthorn, and Miller, Singleton, Streisand, Oregon, 7 0. Again, this is ordinance number 2023 13. Would anyone like to move that this ordinance be passed and adopted as read? I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question is Shall ordinance number 2023 13 be finally passed and adopted? Please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Taylor, Coulter, and Miller, Singleton, Streisand, Morgan, 7 0. All right, thank you. Yep. Item number one under administrative items. Consideration of a request from the Seward County Chamber of Development Partnership, SCCDP, for the sale and consumption of alcoholic beverages at the Seward Banchel on September 24th, 2023. Um, so this item is similar to last year. I think it's gathering on the bricks. Is that what you guys are doing for that? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So since it's at the Banchel, which is city property, like we've done um, the last couple of meetings uh, to sell, to sell, sell and consume alcohol on property. We just ask that council approves beforehand. Um, so that's what we're asking for tonight. No issues from our standpoint. Move approved. Second. Okay, we have a motion to approve and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Kaler, Coulterman, Miller, Singleton, Strice, and Morgan, 7-0. All right, item number two, consideration of an ordinance to amend the finance director slash treasurer pay line. Right. Yes, so we are in the process, as most of you should know, Nick Wolf, our finance director, was hired away by LES. He tried to steal our alignment, instead they stole our finance director. Um, and so Nick's been gone since, um, for a little over a month now, and we've already completed two rounds of applicants and been unable to successfully secure for a multitude of reasons, but Essentially, the job market's really bad right now in the context of hiring. There is not a lot of people out there, especially in kind of these professional positions. And so if you're skilled, you're in high demand, and basically what we've seen is that numerous people come in with multiple offers when they sit down and they say, I'm taking another offer, and so it has not worked out for us. And so in doing so, we're already pushing into budget season, and so one of the recommendations we had in um, and again, uh, we've sent directed letters to CPAs that with registered addresses in Seward and Seward County. We're, we're going so above and beyond trying to make contacts. We're cold calling and texting friends of friends that give us recommendations and just really trying to make engagement. But due to this, one of the things that we recommended and, and spoke to the mayor about was looking to make our comparability adjustment now because it's not going to make a difference in the budget because Nick will be gone for likely two months at the point that we get it filled almost. And so the mayor tasked me with going through and looking at comparability and, and that process has been completed for basically all of the city, but specifically for this one. Um, I do have the sheets. If you want them, we can pass those around. Um, just so you get an idea of what the numbers break out to. Um, our current pay line is starting at 37 uh, 20 an hour and 4505 that puts us pretty down in the bottom of the group so we compare to um, behind Blair Plattsmith Beatrice York um, and then Crete's is only a specific salary so we don't know the highs and lows you see the same number in there twice um, and so we kind of took a look at it, and our recommendation was to bring ourselves up in, to a line with York. In doing so, you see the recommendation, and that's in, in kind of a totality. Um, but I spoke with the mayor, and he can speak more to this, but kind of the ideal was, well, if we're just bringing ourselves up to even, we're still behind. Kind of like our discussion. So the, his recommendation was match York, which is a comparable city, and then add an additional 5% on top of that to try and be competitive. My exact words were beat them. <laughs> I didn't want to repeat that, but <laughs> that's, that's essentially how I got to the mark is, is evening that off. Uh, I, think and, you, I think you have to. And so we still, as you can see, we're still, we're a little bit out of the range, but in context of our compatriots, we're still third 
and both salary and then all total benefits behind Beatrice and Blair for this position. Um, we also eliminated Nebraska City and Schuyler. This position has continued to morph over time and get away from what originally, if you go back, it first started as the clerk and Bonnie was the treasurer. We added the finance director and we moved the treasurer away and they've slowly pulled themselves apart. Schuyler and Nebraska City were clerk treasurers. They were not finance director treasurers, and so we've removed them from the comparative ability. Usually we're looking for 80 to 85% of, of a match in job descriptions and responsibilities, and that's <coughs> faded off so that you see the two lines of not applicable anymore. We've removed them. Um, we're just trying to be competitive. I will tell you, I, was, I noted in my admin report, we're kind of getting crippled in City Hall right now um, due to this and the amount of things that we have going on. We're right in the middle of budget season. Um, we have another staff member in City Hall that was part of my admin report that's also lead, left, essentially. And so, um, you know, due to due the great work by people like Julie Moody, our deputy treasurer, um, she's picked up more than her fair share of, of the slack. And we've tried to do some other things that the council has approved to help compensate for that, but it's still a gargantuan effort for her and the other staff members. I can only commend Kirsten, Derek, Mindy uh, for picking it up. Uh, we made a joke at LBA 40 earlier that I had to help process 127 employees for payroll this week. So that was kind of painstaking process, but we got through it. Uh, and then we've also actually gotten assistance from Nick and Marilyn's even come back and help us out a little bit to just kind of look at some things and help guide us through those that we have seasonal things that we only do once a year that we just kind of need some assistance with. But it is critically important to be competitive and get somebody in because of the nature of all the things that we do, TIF, LB840, all the other funds we have going on. It, it is a full-time effort. So. And these positions tend to be fairly specialized for a reason. And so, you know, City Hall, everyone's pulling together to be able to get the work done <coughs> when you don't have the experience of someone like Marilyn who's done who did this for four years um, or someone like Nick who can come back potentially and help from time to time it just it slows the rest of the process down and other things uh, suffer just from a time from a timely manner of, of getting everything done not just right but in, in, a, in an efficient manner so um, it's been very challenging uh, it's not unique um, Ask any business in town that's trying to hire that is just really tough right now. Um, and so, well, if you know of anyone that you know might be interested, please you know let us know. It's I've been calling this the transfer portal. It's just people have opportunities, and so you're just very very hyper competitive right now. So, any questions or comments? <coughs> it is an ordinance, so when you're ready, I'd ask someone to introduce the ordinance. I'll introduce the ordinance. All right. An ordinance to provide for annual classification of officers and employees of the city of Sioux, Nebraska, to provide for longevity pay and payment of part-time employees, to provide for a date such classification and rate pay ranges of compensation shall become effective, to provide for publication and pamphlet form, and to provide for a time when this ordinance shall take effect. The ordinance has been read by title and designated as ordinance number 2023-14. The title is hereby approved. I need a motion to dispense with statutory rule. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor will be here. Colton Miller, Singleton Trice, and Wigan 70. Again, this is ordinance number 2023-14. Would anyone like to move that this ordinance be passed and adopted as read? So moved. A motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the question is, shall ordinance number 2023-14 be finally passed and adopted? Please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Kaler, Coltman, Miller, Singleton, Strikes, and Morgan, 7-0. This is the last ordinance for this evening, so I'll make one final motion to make all the ordinances a part of the permanent record. Yes, I move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor of Wilkin, Kaler, Coltman, Norris, Stratton, Morgan, 7-0. All right, thank you.
Thank you. Um, item three, award community development block grant CDBG downtown revitalization program forgivable loans. Okay. Yes, uh, 625 Seward Street, owned by uh, Darian Cynthia Wang. This is the Jayco Salon building. When this originally came in, the original DTRs that came in about a year ago, there were a few issues that they resolved pretty quickly, and then we had some major concerns about the initial application in regards to uh, SHPO, so historic preservation. And so that was worked through with the help of SHPO and Kelly over at SEND, and um, the family was able to get that kind of resolved. This was brought to LB840 at a meeting right before this meeting and was approved unanimously. Um, this will be uh, a good project. Their, their idea is to try and basically match kind of what's going on. There were photos and stuff included, but match what was going on Dragon Palace because that's kind of the same building. So no specific issues with this one. Try to wrap up, I believe, one more that we have coming through the pipeline from that original group. And then we'll kind of close all these down and wrap them up for this round of DTR. I can answer any questions. Yeah. Any questions or comments from the council? Otherwise, is that for a motion to approve? So moved. Second. The motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please register your votes. Victor, do you want to vote? Let's do that. All right. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Kayla, Copeland, Miller, Silton, Trice, and Morgan, 7 0. Thank you. Item 4, a compilation engagement letter with AMGL for the preparation of the budget in the form uh, prescribed by the State of Nebraska Budget Act for fiscal year 23 24. Greg? Yes, we use AMGL, our audit uh, auditors, for the preparation of the actual budget documentation that goes to the state. Uh, and then they also provide services to kind of basically give us an analysis and a few other items. There may be more items that they give us this time around that Nick would normally handle, but um, we'll make sure we maximize their assistance in verifying with the new finance director that we hopefully get, along with myself, the work that we do with you guys on the budget, but make sure all the forms are done correctly. Uh, I believe we've utilized them uh, for the last seven years to, to fulfill this and just make sure we're getting everything incorrectly for the state. I can answer any questions you have. Any questions or comments from the council? Move to approve. Any or a second? Second. Any motion and a second to approve. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please register your votes. Please display the votes. Voting in favor, Wilkin, Kaler, Coltman, Miller, Singleton, Strice, and Morgan, 7 0. Okay, item 5, update on the Wellness Center. Great. Yes, uh, numerous things going on with the Wellness Center. Um, I believe some of the final designs were, were shown. Uh, in the context of getting some last minute feedback, again, everything on the first floor as we discussed, um, color palettes and some of the soft goods and stuff are being selected. We're working with through Sourcewell to acquire basketball hoops, volleyball nets, flooring, uh, gymnasium flooring, things like that. Sourcewell is an application that we're a member part of that does all the bidding every year ahead of time. So you kind of jump in and get the, the cheapest price right out of the bat. Um, finalizing some of the technical elements. Uh, I think all the, the layouts and stuff will be done. And so um, we'll probably have a formal presentation on the 18th. The reason being for that is I believe there's going to be one more fundraising push to kind of push it across the finish line on that foundational side and, and private fundraising side. That was a recommendation by the fundraising group of the nonprofit committee. So just taking advantage of trying to get some of those things out. Uh, we did complete the geotechnical elements of it. That's the first stage of construction. We just received that report. I forwarded it to Mike tonight. So we get to pour over that tomorrow and find out what's below ground and what, what we may need to scrape off or deal with. But that's been completed. The plating will come shortly and then off and running probably in the next 60 to 90 days. Uh, for You're going to see a ton of construction going on out there because they're ready to go. Um, our new Wellness Center Executive Director, Joel Brazy, starts on Monday next week. And so Joel will be on hand and he'll take up a majority of some of those detailed elements. He's going to meet with um, some potential youth care providers looking at the before and after school care, the child welfare, or child watch room, um, and then some of our programming that goes on in relation to that. He'll also, I think Joel's going to be going on some tours of some of our facilities we've already visited that we used as 
basically models for how we put the wellness center together. So that's Beatrice, uh, Papillion Landing, Wayne, some of those other facilities that kind of models are similar size and get do's and don'ts and really talk about some of those elements that are not design things but more like uh, operational. Um, continue to make those connections. Again, these are great facilities that have really been very forthright and open in sharing plans and specs, bid documents, budget documents, anything we've asked for, they've been very, very helpful in giving us. Uh, and so we can't say enough about how friendly they've been, again, when they're not municipal government entities, they're nonprofit entities, but they're very, very, very helpful. And so we want to continue to work on that relationship. Uh, and so Joel will be going around meeting with some of them. Uh, and then he'll be, uh, we'll kind of get him in quickly to just re-up the budget. Because again, if we're building a building next year, we're not going to have a ton of expenses in context of um, operations, but have him review that, take a look at that, see what things have changed within that budget since you created it last year, uh, and just kind of do those double checks and get him briefed up on that. Um, that's kind of it. It's getting down to the nitty gritty. Um, and so we're excited to get that unveiling. Like I said, July 18th will be probably the big one for, for council. We'll have BDH here and Samson on hand to meet with you as well. So I guess there any other questions on the wellness center? There we go. Okay. Uh, I have quite a few things, but I will not try to take up a ton of time. The first one is just kind of a, a communal thing that wasn't in the admin report, but it gives you an example of the work that's being done by a lot of people in town. And this is the volunteer fire department and the police department. So yesterday we had uh, a busy day. Not so much here, but there was a trailer fire down in Milford that spread to another trailer fire. Uh, that I hear all the radio traffic in City Hall, and so we immediately started hearing calls for Seward. Essentially, all of Seward mm -hmm. responded to those calls because they were worried it was going to spread even further. Um, so we had rolled out everybody we had available, and in the middle of that, I think it was, somebody else may have been there, but I know Milford, us, and there's one other, but it wasn't Garland time. So at that time, Garland is put on notice that they are covering all of the City of Seward. So any calls that are coming out of the city of Seward, now they're paging them from Garland and having them come into the city. We had a pretty dastardly situation take place at the Justice Center right when that happened. Um, and I heard the radio traffic on that one. Uh, and it's probably due to the quick reacting time of the police department and getting on scene over there. They had a situation with some pretty uh, bad cuts on, on an individual that ended up needing some tourniquets and things like that applied. And when I heard that, I, I can't give you the exact time, maybe it was less, but it was an extremely long time for Garland to respond, not by anything specific of them. Usually when you're rolling, you're waiting for an EMT to show up or something like that, and that's out in Garland. So you're, who knows how many they even have, but yeah, quite But it was a long time. It, this is just the nature of the beast. So the story gets even better. Hmm. If you didn't hear about it, then there was a fire at the Midwest. Um, Feedlot. Feedlot there by the way. First, you forgot about the swather. What? You forgot about the swather first. There was this, and then between that, there was a swather in the middle of the road on the gravel road that was fully engulfed. Ah. We had to do that too. There's that one as well. <laughs> then, then Midwest Feedlot caught on fire. They called us in, called us off, and then I think the hay bales started catching on fire. They called us back in before everyone ever made it back. That one included us, Garland, Milford. Pleasantdale doesn't have a lot of equipment, but they were called in for whatever reasons. Beaver Crossing. Beaver Crossing. And then Staplehurst and tomorrow, then Staplehurst was in charge of the city of Seward to cover all our calls here. And then we had a call. We did have a call. So with a ten twenty two. Which is? It's disregard. Uh, nothing we can do. So that is a unusual day, but that is how this ends up going down. And I don't think people sometimes fully understand all the, the back and forth that it takes to, to accommodate that. And so, uh, especially in the summer, people on vacation, things like that, running pretty thin. I'm guessing there's some, I think Kimsey came into Tim's office this morning and had to go look through some plans and stuff. And Jonathan might have even texted him yesterday. I don't think he got home until who knows when. The heat was our biggest issue. So, a 
a lot of a lot of work went into that yesterday. So I just want to commend our volunteers and also the police department for their fast reaction time um, to get over there and, and help treat that person medically until Garland could get there. And so can you go know, good county sheriffs because they were out there almost the whole time as well for traffic. So that was just one of the many fun things that happened yesterday. Again, I just want to reiterate City Hall staffing issues. Um, we were informed that we're going to be down a payroll clerk now too yesterday. So we got two major financial positions opened up that is going to continue to put a lot of stress on City Hall because that work transfers to all of us. Um, just, just doing payroll, I think that ate up almost a whole day for me. Um, and so it is... Uh, be, be kind to us and be patient with us so we don't get back to your email right away or we rem get remiss and stuff. We're doing a lot of stuff that's just not normal day to day for us. So it gets a little wily. Um, but especially Julie, if you need something from her. Be very nice to Julie. She's my favorite person right now. Um, and she's doing an incredible job. I cannot commend her enough, Julie Moody, and, and the work that she's doing. I think she was almost deciding she wanted to stay in Europe with the high school, just not come back. But she came back, thank uh, the water tower project is underway, and so they've begun over there, so just be mindful of that. Uh, we'll probably have to deal with that or see that for the next coming year or so. So that will be going on. Uh, we'll begin to move into the budget process. Again, I will be leading that by myself until a finance director comes on, and again, I'll just be teaching them anyways. So uh, be prepared for that to roll out in July and August and finishing up in September. Civic Center, there's a lot of really big things going on right now that are very important. The incredible group of commissioners and users and Aaron over there, we've seen the designs for the ADA accessibility and the redesign of the Civic Center. It's pretty neat. I'm really excited to show you guys. They'll probably bring that in at some point and unveil that to you as well. But they're doing great work. Um, I can't speak highly enough of, of the commissioners that are on that, that volunteer committee. Um, July 4th, we met with the July 4th committee and got everything underway. Kind of business as usual. There's not substantial differences. We got a home for the carnival. <laughs> That's always a fun time. I just told them to stop having the carnival. But negotiating it around. But we want to change everything. <laughs> biggest one is making sure we got barricades where barricades need to be. Um, and then I think accommodating the Higgins boat and its, it's need for minimal traversing of corners so but that sounds like we got that taken care of so july 4th looks to be ready to go um, i will i will fall on this sword most likely we will and i talked to the mayor about this right we will have to have a meeting early in july i've talked to the mayor he says if we can keep it light we would just do claims that is the reason i went back and julie go in maryland go you're going to need to approve these claims in july that first week week because there's just too many things on that that can't even wait to the 18th to be approved because of just the cyclical timing nature of it and so I talked to the mayor I apologize that is my mistake just kind of in the craziness of trying to run around this stuff so we most likely will we will meet on the 5th to approve those claims we just um, we need a quorum yep and so if you're on vacation or something like that I think and if we can just if we need a quorum I, I mean we're talking like minutes we're not talking about a long meeting it's just to we to approve the claims and if there's any questions obviously it'll be the day after the fourth so it's I, you know barring anything that happens if there's an update that's needed at that time but i don't want to keep you here any longer than we need to so it should be a relatively quick meeting that was my mistake so i i will apologize for that so i know we had worked out with you guys to just go ahead and forego that one but we're gonna go ahead and have it on the fifth my hope is that the Pledge of Allegiance is the longest item on the agenda. So we'll see. That's all I have unless you have questions about anything included in my report. Any questions or comments or anything a motion to accept the report? So moved. Second. The motion and a second. Please register your votes. Please play the votes. Voting in favor of Lincoln, Kayla, Coltrane, Miller, Smoking Strikes, and Order 7 0. I don't think so. I'll verify. Are there any future requests for council agenda items or administrative action? Seeing none. Um, Jonathan, you've been waiting patiently.
patiently. Absolutely. So what's going on in Seward? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so a special thank you to the City of Seward staff, uh, specifically for their support of the Community Hosting Bicycle Ride Across Nebraska brand. Uh, it's a very successful event, June 9th and 10th, so really appreciate the partnership on that um, recent event. A few upcoming things to note. Uh, tomorrow we have our first uh, Seward County Rising Stars Leadership Program graduation ceremony starting at 11 tomorrow at the Civic Center Auditorium. Lunch to follow. If you'd like to join us, please let me know. Wednesday, June 28th, Coffee and Contacts uh, with uh, Union Bank and Trust at Neutral Grounds from 7.30 to 9. No need to RSVP for that. Please join us. And yes, 4th of July is on the 4th of July this year. Still getting calls. I told you. <laughs> My favorite call to get. Yeah. What day is the Fourth of July in Seward? Tuesday. I don't. I don't think we need to meet tonight because we were good at the last meeting on the. I, I think we're in a good spot. I think yeah. we're in a good spot. So, so we don't. We, no strategy session needed. That's all. Just a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Please register your vote. Please yeah. sway the vote. Voting in favor: Wilkin, Taylor, Coltman, Miller, Swanson, Strice, Ward, and Seven Zero. Zero. Um, so thank you all, and have a great evening. I got it. Yeah.